prior to the ad break, we looked at a budget. And the one thing we said that money is coming in and money is going out, but where is this money coming in to? When I get a salary, my boss doesn't come to me and say, right, here's your money. Normally it goes into a bank account. And when we've got money coming into our bank account and leaving our bank account, we want to know what's going on in that bank account. And so banks give us a statement. Okay, and on that statement, it shows everything. The money coming into your account, the money going out, you're able to look at that statement and say, ah, now I know why I've got no money anymore. Okay, because I drew here and I drew there and I paid this and I paid that and this came off my account and that came off my account. What a nightmare. All right, so this segment we're looking at bank statements. All right, so banks offer different types of accounts and services. There's a savings account and a bank account that earns interest. You can use a savings account for short term savings. A check or a current account, a bank account that is used to deposit and withdraw money by visiting the bank branch, using an ATM or internet banking, or by writing a check. These are usually available to people who earn a regular income. And then we get a fixed deposit account. This account is aimed at those who have a lump sum they want to invest over a fixed period of time. That is medium or long term saving. Interest is also earned on the investment. A credit account or credit card. An account either with a store or a bank that allows the account holder to purchase items now and pay for them later. A debit account with a debit card. Debit cards can be used to pay for purchases. When it's swiped, money is deducted from the account. Credit is not available on this account. <whistles> Guys, there are so many different things that banks offer, so many different types of accounts that they offer, and everyone has its purpose. So when we go through them again quickly, we can see the following. A savings account. I go to a bank and I say, listen, I want to save some money. Every month I want to put aside 200 Rand. Why? Because my wife's birthday is coming and I want to take her for a holiday. Okay, just checking the wife's not yet. Okay, so every month I go to the bank, I say, I want to open up a savings account. You're going to give me some interest on my money, Mr. Bank Manager. So here's 200 Rand every month, and we put it in a savings account. So I cannot touch it. And that's just going to be for a short little term. It's not going to be for years and years and years and years, just short term. Maybe a few months, maybe a year, maybe even two or three years, but not for a long time. Okay. Right. Then we also get check or current accounts, and these are accounts that you can use, uh, take a card, go and draw money at an ATM. You can do internet banking. Normally, people get their salaries put into a check or a current account. Okay. It's also an account by which you can actually get a little checkbook and you write checks, but that's going out rather quickly. And I don't know many people anymore who actually sit and write out checks. Everything's done on computers. Internet banking, great way to go. Okay, then you have a fixed deposit account, and this is when you get a lump sum of money. Let's say it's your birthday, and your aunt suddenly gives you lots of money, gives you a thousand rand, and says, here's a thousand rand, you keep it. And you say, cool, I'm gonna put this money in a special account. Uh, fixed deposit account. I want it then, I want it there for 18 months. Means you cannot touch it for those 18 months. It just stays in the bank and gets interest. Okay, you're going to get money for having your money in the bank. Then a credit account or credit card, that's when I have a little card. It allows me to buy things now, but pay for them later. Credit cards can be dangerous, eh, people? Because it's so easy to say, gee, oh, this looks so good, I'll just put it on my credit card. Why? Because I'm not paying for it now, I'll pay for it later. Why put it on a credit card? And so many people get into debt 
because the credit card gets higher and the amount gets higher and higher and more and more and next minute you can't pay it off. And then a debit account is basically when you have an account, you've got money in the account and you use a card to pay for your stuff. Okay? When the money runs out in the account, you can't use it anymore. Right, so a bank statement is usually sent to the account holder monthly. Bank statements show the following for each transaction. So they show the date of the transaction, a description of the transaction, showing the type of transaction. Okay? In other words, have you put money in or are you taking money out? Also, is it um, where did you do this transaction? And it might say paid so much okay for uh at a tv store because you bought something for your tv or it could say cash withdrawal at atm so much money all right it also shows the amount of the transactions indicating whether it's a debit or a credit in other words whether um you paid money in or whether money has come out of your account there's also a column for the balance after each transaction. So let's have a look here. First of all, we've got to understand a few terms. An account holder, this is the person whose name the account is in. Opening and closing balance, the amount of money in the account at the beginning of the month and the amount of money at the end of the month. A transaction is any event where money moves into or out of the account. And a debit transaction is the amount of money paid out of the account credit transaction, the amount of money deposited into an account. Okay, so let's just have a look at the following. Zola receives a following statement from her bank, detailing her transactions from the 25th of the first month, in other words, the 25th of January, to the 20th of February. Study the statement and answer the questions that follow. Okay, so let's have a look at her statement and let's discuss it. First of all, on the 25th of January, she got a salary and her salary was 8,000 Rand. It means the balance then was 8,050 Rand 50 cents. Now, folks, why are these figures different? She gets 8,000 Rand given to her. And then suddenly your balance jumps to 8,050 Rand and 50 cents. Why? I'll tell you why. Because in her bank, before they put the salary, there was already 50 Rand and 50 cents. When they added the 8,000, it now jumped to 8,050 Rand and 50 cents. Then, on the 27th, shame, this is the horrible time when money comes out of your account. Okay? Car insurance was 100 Rand. Look here minus 100. Why minus? Because it's coming out of your account. So when you take 100 Rand away, we're left with 7,950 Rand 50 cents. Electric, uh, electronic rather transfer to Mr. Seri. Why? Because he's your guy who you renting some property from. You've got to pay him rent. And that's 3,000 Rand. Again, a minus because you paying it out. So we've got 7,950 Rand and 50 cents, and we take off 3,000, we now left with 4,950 Rand and 50 cents. Okay. There's a debit order, in other words, this money's coming off every month, and it's a health save uh, medical aid. And you're paying 500 Rand a month for that medical aid. Again, there's a minus. That's because it's going out of your account. Your balance now is 4,450 Rand 50 cents. Do you see how your money's going lower and lower and lower and lower? It's quite depressing, isn't it? Okay. Then we also had a debit order for Moby Contract. We had a debit order for a Super Fashion Store. We're paying them every month. Then we went to the uh, shop and we bought something at a shop called Shop and Save. We bought stuff to the value of 2,000 Rand. Ah, but now look at this. Payment, Mrs. S. Kamalu, 500. For some reason, Mrs. Kamalu gave us 500 Rand. We're very grateful for her. In all these other transactions, money's coming out of my account. You see my balance is getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. Suddenly, voila, it gets bigger. From 1,900, 
to 2,400. It got bigger by 500. Why? Because Mrs. Kamalu was so nice to us, she gave us 500 rand, and we thank her for that. Okay, then the next, uh, on the 20th of the month, we went to auto uh, mechanics, and we paid a thousand rand. Something went wrong with our car. We had to give them a thousand rand. And so our balance is 1,450. Our total remaining now at that period, 1,400 rand and 50 cents. Sure, lots of information, eh? Let's have a look at the type of questions that they can ask us. How can you tell the difference between the debits and the credits in the statement? Quite simply, the money coming in had a little plus, okay? Money going out had a minus next to it, okay? That's the money going out of our account. List Zola's debits and credits for the month. Well, you could see all the money that's coming in and you could see the mon money that was going out. In the first line of this statement, Zola received a salary of 8,000. Look at the balance and work out what she had in the account before the payment was made. We've already answered that, eh? Remember, her account was 8,050 rand 50 cents, her balance. So because she put in 8,000 means she had 50 rand and 50 cents in that account in the first place. She received some birthday money as well as her salary this month. Identify and write down the birthday transaction. Remember that 500 rand that came from Mrs. Kamalu? Actually, it wasn't just a like little out of the blue. It was Zola's birthday. And because it was her birthday, her aunt gave her some money. Okay, and it was 500 rand. So that's where that 500 rand came from. How much money would she have left? if she hadn't received the 500 rand. Well, that's kind of easy, isn't it? Because if she hadn't received the 500, she would have been 500 rand less here. So it would have been 1,450 minus the 500. She would have only had 900 rand and 50 cents left in her account if Mrs. Kamalo had not given her that 500 rand. Okay. Right, let's have a look here. Below is an incomplete bank statement. Okay, so here we got a bank statement. It's for the month of March. And we see here we have an open balance on the 27th of the month. And our open balance is 2,304 Rand. Okay, then we have interest on the credit balance. So we're getting interest. That means we're getting in 13 Rand 95. Okay, so we've got to fill in all these missing figures. So let's do that quickly. All right, so I'm going to say, cool, we've got 2,304 Rand and 85 cents. Okay, we're getting extra 13 Rand and 95. So I'm going to say plus 13 Rand 95 equals, I've now got 2,318 Rand 80 cents. 2,000. 318 rand 80 cents. Then we are getting a salary. What's the salary? Money's been put in of 2,100. So we add 2,100 rand and we're now getting an amount of 4,418 rand 80 cents. Okay, 4,418 rand 80 cents is my balance. A shame. Then I went to an ATM and I took out 400 Rand. What is my balance? Well, from our calculator, we're going to subtract 400 Rand. And obviously, that's going to leave us with an amount of 4,018 Rand. So 4,018 Rand 80 cents. Then we go to the ATM again and we draw another 800 Rand minus 800 bucks equals, and here it goes, 3,218 Rand, 3,218 Rand, 80 cents. Okay. Then ATM deposit. Ah, someone put money in our account. How cool. All right, in fact, it was us. We went to an ATM, we had 600, and we put it in the ATM. 
of 600 Rand. And again, so we've got this figure, and we're going to add 600, and of course that's now going to come to 3,800. 3,818 Rand 80 cents. Okay, then we go and we spend 235 Rand 95. So we're going to subtract 235 Rand 95 cents and our balance then is going to be 3582 Rand 85 cents. Okay, did you see how we did it all? all right. Money coming in, we're going to add to our account. Money going out is going to subtract from our account. All right, in summary then. In this segment, we've covered the following. We've described various bank accounts and we've interpreted and worked on different bank accounts. We're going to take an air break. When we come back, we're going to look at what these banks actually do to us. So just for having money in the bank, they charge us some money for doing that. And it's called bank fees. So come back after the break.